Hello, 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 hello. Happy Thursday. Thursday, yes. I can't even tell the days of the week anymore. But I know it's Thursday. Hi guys. Welcome to another live book reading. Um, I finally got this book from a friend uh, last week. I haven't read it. Uh, so we are checking out a new book together. I did say yesterday um, I'm going to be reading this today. Uh, hold on. Let me just put on my mic. Hello. Hi, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Well, it's still afternoon. Welcome. Today we are reading from Perfect Imperfections by Makanaka Mavengere Munsaka. I don't want to mess around with her surname. Makanaka Mavengere Munsaka. I don't know if any one of you have read it, has read it. Um, this is published by Blackbird Books by Tabiso. Um, and you can check out the website um, blackbirdbooks.africa. Uh, and that is where you can get your own copy on blackbird books website directly or you can get it from any good bookstore it is available online it is available in store but we are trying to stay away from the outside as much as possible if not put on your mask don't touch too much things and carry your hand sanitizer mm. so i'm gonna read the back of the book and then I'm going to read a little bit about Makanaka. Uh, if I can find it. I'm not sure where I put it now. But yes. Um, I did meet uh, Makanaka at Blackbird Books hosted a Black Girls in Literature event uh, la late last year. Is it my phone or you're on mute? Mm, I think everybody else can hear me. Please confirm. Uh, hi, Sals. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Um, everybody can hear me. Do that if you can hear me. But I think it's just you. Uh, Hello. Uh, I'm going to read the back of the book and then I will start reading until, let's say, half past. Yeah. So, I... Okay, everybody everybody can hear me. Okay, great. Because I do have a mic on. Okay, you sort it. Okay, great. So, I feel like the phone is too close. Okay. Hi, Ms. Wina. Hello. Happy Thursday. So that's what we're reading. New books. You know, I love new books. So I got this last week. And yeah. So this is Makanaga's first book. And I think she's might, she might be writing <laughs> more. Um, but yeah. Maybe we should actually ask her. Um, I, I, I think Miss Weiner, you will correct me. There was a live where she said, leave it close. We want to see the skin paler. I was, I was. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So, um, I've been, um, I've, I've been, I've, in, I've, I've actually joined a few lives where she was interviewed and I think she's working on something new. Anyway, otherwise we'll put the pressure on. Uh, have any of you guys read this? Please let me know. Uh, I'm going to read um, the back of the book and then I'll start with the prologue and then we will start until half past. Okay. Um, okay. 
Maxine escapes an abusive polygamous marriage to a man much older than her to make a new life in Harare, Zimbabwe. The story follows the four madams she works for. Through them, we see the struggles of women trying to hold down careers and relationships in a big city where tradition, patriarchy, dom domestic abuse and unhealthy societal behaviors form a backdrop. Through Maxine and the intricacies of the relationships women share with their helper, Mavengere Munsaka explores the idea of women learning and unlearning the idea of love, self-love or romantic love. Each woman must find the courage to believe in and hold on to it. This is a story that shows the truth of what women can discover about themselves via their friendships with other women. Um, okay, so Samula has read the book. Um, Nikki at reading dates says I've I have I've read it in oh she read it in Jan and she enjoyed it so much. Um, Ms. Wina says I got a copy from SA Book Fair last year. I still oh still to be read. Listen, we we bought a lot of stuff that has is still on the to to be read uh, list. Um, Nikki says you know my obsession with Zimba authors. Yes, I do. And you gifted me this book, so yay! Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to read the. Um, okay, actually, open. Uh, I just found um, a little profile. Um, Makanaka Mavengere Munsaka was born and raised in Zimbabwe and graduated with an accounting degree. She worked within the finance field for 14 years before she decided to remove her corporate hat. And follow her true calling storytelling she currently resides in South Africa and perfect imperfections is the is her debut novel so um, uh, Miss Weiner says I also have a deep obsession with um, Zimbabwean authors yes <laughs> okay hi everybody that just came in this is what I'm reading now um, I'm going to read the prologue and then we will continue with, um, I won't even stop after the prologue. Okay, it's not too, uh, wait. Okay, so the prologue is set in present day. The atmosphere in the village court was tense. Signoro's wives were sitting on one side, all looking unnerved. I did not understand why the chief needed to hear from them. None of them would have dared to go astray. Signoro seemed to have the leaves and grass walking, working as his agents, telling him of their every move through their silent whispers. My parents and sister walked in first, then me and Damuka followed close behind them. Everyone turned to look at us with shock written on their faces. It's that wife of Signoro. Maxine even has the audacity to come with the man she met in the city. Nhasi, Pachauraiwa, Munu Pano. I heard people murmuring all around me, some speculating that Tamuka's presence at the hearing would cause serious trouble. Tamuka had insisted on coming to stand by my side knowing that my husband, Signoro, would not, welcome him, would not welcome him. As we waited for the chief to arrive and as people continued to snigger, I, became, I began to feel very afraid. The heavy booted feet of workers making their way home after a long day in the fields, the wheels of old trucks that delivered supplies to the village every so often, the feet of school children walking more than two hours to and from the nearest school in heavily laden scotch carts drawn by oxen that had been better that had seen better days had all worn the red cracked gravel road in behura or Be buhera zimbabwe 
the dusty path led to Nishero Mitatu village. As the sun was setting, the inhabitants of the village could be heard settling into their evening routines. There were muted conversations from the men as they made their way home from the village court and the loud whistles of the herd boys as they rounded up the cattle, directing them into the kraals. Pots were clanking as the women put what meagre rations they could find together into a wholesome meal for their families, and some girls could be seen walking back from the well at a leisurely pace, balancing calabashes of water on their heads as they snickered and laughed out loud at whatever rumours were circulating in the village. I gazed into the distance, following the long winding path with my eyes, and wondered about the world beyond it, the world where I heard meals could be prepared on a contraption that did not require firewood, where people lived in houses that were big enough to hold entire villages, and where both women and men could earn a living and provide a better life for their families. The place I knew I was probably never going to see. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. So I read the first page was the present day part was the prologue um, in present day. And the part that I, I started with the heavy booted feet of workers was August 2006. And now we are in August 2005. Um, oh, uh, Nikki says, uh, I have so many books to be read. We all need a sabbatical leaf. <laughs> guys uh, yeah like i'm not even gonna say anything about that <laughs> um august 2005 now we're fast forwarding i was a happy 15 year old girl full of life with a dream of one day going to the city to study to be a teacher unlike my peers i loved school despite the fact that it was two hours away i did not i did not care that the school was made up of a tiny office block, two windowless classrooms for the A-level students, and a few musasa trees scattered around the grounds with old blackboards stuck on their trunks on which all the knowledge I had accumulated thus far had been scribbled with white chalk. I did not take to heart the remarks of teachers like Miss Bararai, a science teacher who felt that doing arts subjects English history in Shona was a complete waste of time. She would say, Kutoita ma'ats. Miss pa Pararai was convinced that all of us doing these subjects were going to end up being traditional healers and believed we would be better off just going to the river and getting captured by a mermaid instead of wasting our time. After school, I used to go to the borehole, fetch water for the house, gather firewood, take a bath in the river, then rush home to assist my mother with cooking supper for the family. I did this almost daily, and unlike everyone else around me who seemed content with the tedious repetition and routine, I felt there was much more to life than being within the confines of Michero Mitatu. I did not aspire to be married off to a man living in a brick house like most girls did, or hope to get a job in the nearby farms or mines like most boys did. I wanted to take my chances, go to the city and build a better life for myself. In my mind, every sunrise and sunset meant I was a step closer to my dream. But this all changed on 18 August 2005, the day my father's youngest daughter, Aunt Dorica, died from malaria. A week after she was buried, her husband, Signoro, a 57-year-old man with a skeletal frame, ashy grey skin, a big nose and foul breath, called for a meeting with my father's family. 
he told my father and uncles that he needed them to honor the Kugadza, Mapifwa, Mapif, Mapifwa tradition, a girl from the deceased, the deceased wife's family had to be given away in marriage to Signoro, the widower. After a lot of deliberation, my 17-year-old sister Maggie was selected as the replacement wife, but Signoro refused to take her. He claimed Maggie was damaged goods because she had a fatherless baby. Another round of discussions and arguments ensued, and when they died down, the conclusion that had been reached was that in exactly a year after Signoro had observed the year-long mourning period dictated by tradition, I was to take on the ad <laughs> abominable duty of replacing my aunt. I went numb when the news reached my ears. It felt as if, in that instant, a big black hole had opened up and was swallowing all that I was. I knew almost immediately that my life as I knew it was over. I was now going to be bound to a life of being treated like a baby-making machine and field worker whose only real purpose was to please my husband and increase his descendants. My hopes for my future were dashed. I cried long and hard because everything that was to become of me had come down to a tradition I did not even understand, a, dicta a, a dictatorial one, religiously upheld by those who stood to benefit from it. Mm. In this case, that was Signoro, a man who already had four other wives. I could not believe how something as tiny as a mosquito could have changed my life so suddenly and so drastically. I felt betrayed by my parents and uncles because I expected them to protect me, but they went ahead and sold me off like a mere calf at an auction, demanding an extra, an extra payment from Signoro more than what he had paid for my aunt as a token of appreciation because I was tender and fresh. When my father informed me that I also had to pull out of school with immediate effect, I cried even more because education for me was my ticket out of poverty. Being pulled out of school just before final exams meant all my efforts over the years had been for nothing. Every day after I heard my fate, I would wake up, sweep, my ho sweep the homestead, fetch water, and prepare food for my mother as she headed to the fields and for my father who usually went to the village courtyard to engage in some frivolous discussions or with other men. I would then sit under the mango tree next to the tiny mud hut kitchen praying for a miracle. I would think of running away in the dead of night to board the bus and let it take me to that promised land called Harare. But every time the thought crossed my mind, reality always, always found a way to snatch me out of that fantasy, reminding me that I knew no one in the city and that I did not have a single cent to my name. Sometimes I, I would stand at the entrance to our homestead, wishing I had given in when Simon, the chief's son, made his demands or had given a chance or had given a chance to Girimon and the host of village boys who spent years vying for my attention, getting into fist fights in the, vi in the fields while they were herding cattle in a bid to prove that they were strong and worthy of my affection. Ever since news of my impending marriage made the rounds, the same village boys avoided me like a plague because they feared the consequences that would befall them should they be seen even looking in my way. I had been condemned to aloneness. <sighs> um, 
so I'm going to read a few uh, comments. Let me see. Oh, um, Letex Face was asking, is this is this only the prologue? It's so descriptive. I love how it takes us into this world. Yeah, like the first part like was literally, you could picture what's happening because of the, the blurb at the back, right? Um, and Makanaka, Makanaka joined and she was laughing. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not sure what I read. Um, hi Makanaka. Hi everybody who just joined in. Ms. Wina says, how can a child replace a deceased aunt as a wife? This patriarchal practices must just fall. They really must. I mean, Bona no, she's not even going to study and she really wants to, to, to study. Um, hey Zotando. Um, hearts, hearts, hearts. I just bought that book because you recommended it. Listen, um, Zotando, I'm glad you bought it. I recommended it even though I've never read it as well. But yeah, um, I'm glad you got it. Uh, Charlotte says, hello, hi. She says, indeed, this pa patriarchal practice is must fall. Hi, Jane. Hello, everybody. Okay. So uh, that was August, that was um, August 2005. So a year later, this is now 30th August 2006. Um, we still have like five more minutes. Um, yeah. 30th August, 2006. True to his word, exactly a year later, Signoro came marching triumphantly to our house. Ah, demanding that I make my way to his homestead and said that he expected to find me in his house when he returned from his visit to another village in five days. In my desperation and despair, I spent those few days trying to think of ways and means to get myself out of the imminent predicament. I was so desperate that I was willing to let a guy, any guy who was brave enough, have his way with me. I was ready and willing to give up that one thing Signora was so impatiently waiting to ravage hoping that the very action of my deflowering would free me from the trap I had been thrown into. I would do anything to be saved from having to spend the rest of my life in Signoro's den, but there was no hero in sight. 4 September 2006 as the sun's rays beamed in through the tiny hole in the mud hut kitchen where I lay as the cock's crow heralded the coming of a new day, I felt my heart squeeze and my stomach turn. The day had indeed come, and in a few hours I was to be escorted to my new home. The circles beneath my eyes which seemed to darken with each sleepless night I spent dreading the life that lay ahead, were now a visible feature on my face. My skin, which used to, to glow, was now pale and my once full figure had been cut in half. With tears running down my face, I sat up on my bed as my mother opened the door and started scuffling, scuffling around for a hole. Kouchi she walked towards the bed as she asked me if I was still crying. Signor is a good man. He will be able to provide for you and your children and help us, your family. He said he will let you go back to school and he will pay us two cows and 250 US dollars as your bride prize. The money will be a great help to us. I see Unoda Kuti Tikwangwaye Nenzara Here. Of course, I didn't want my family to starve, but I couldn't just accept the situation. You said the exact same thing when father married off Sisi Besi to Mudumeni, then Sisi Vare to that good for nothing Jokonia. Three years ago, you forced Sisi Nyerezi to stop school and married her to Mazibaba Judas. Remember how, she, how he swore he would let her continue with her education and that 
who would be taken care of. Well, look at her now and look at us, I replied angrily. Things are not the, the, things are not the slightest bit better, even though there are fewer mouths to feed. Let Signora look for another wife. I'm sure there are many girls who think getting married to an old man like him is an achievement. I don't. I want to finish school, then go to Harare, do my teaching course and get a job. I will then be able to send money to help out here. I was adamant. Ah, Mwanangu, Mwanangu unenge watoti mesara, mesera. You, you would help put us in a difficult position. This woman. Senora already gave your father a hundred US dollars as a down payment. Where will we find that money now that we used it to buy seeds? I looked at her in disbelief. It felt as though she was more interested in getting a good harvest than she was in the fact that I was a miner who needed to be protected and was now going to be expected to play wife to a man older than my own father. Ms. Weiner says a child being used as, as a salvation from poverty. Imagine. He will demand the cows he paid as your late aunt's bride price back too, you know. Where will we get them? Just accept things as they are. There is nothing you or I can do about it. So many women have been married off at your age. Wotongo shinga, shinga, wotongo shinga mwanangu. You will just have to be strong. My mother was calm. Imagine you are. Uh, even if it were possible for you to get out of it, you leaving the village to go work is a bad idea because once you start working and getting your own money, it will be difficult for you to find a good man who will marry you. Look at our neighbor's daughter, Zolin. She went to the city to work. Now she is close to 25 and there is still no sign of a decent man in sight for her. She continued. Imagine like by number 25. <laughs> Most men's wives are, are here in the village. You will not find a good man there, she said as she stood up. I don't want to get married, please, I pleaded. Ah, Mwanangu, the issue has already been settled. Ini ndavakuenda kumunda. Please don't forget to take the two chickens to Donarero's mother while I'm out in the fields. I will be back around 12 and your sister, father and I will escort you to Senora's house. Please be prepared because we don't want trouble. Mother, my mother picked up the hole and a jug of water and walked out. I looked back at the old bumpy mattress that had once belonged to my parents, which I had for the past three years shared with my two younger sisters. Tears fell from my eyes because I knew this was the last time I would see it. When I closed the door of the tiny kitchen, I cried because I realized that with every step I took towards Senora's house. I was leaving behind my childhood, my innocence, my dreams. As we walked into Senora's homestead, I conceded defeat. The battle had indeed been lost, and I was now probably going to take my last breath in Michero Mitatu, the very same place I had desperately gasped for my first. At my final breath, I was going to be tormented by the same dreams which once seemed so near. I fell to my knees and cried as I watched my mother, sister and father walk away with the two sickly cows Signoro had paid for my bride price. Sure. Yeah. And thus begins chapter one. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, um, Roger says, so a man 
Batong, so a man defines your success according to that mom. And yeah, Lerato says, um, I need to get my hands on this book. Makanaka is Makanaka, you you're sending tears, but you're the one who's making us cry with this intro. Like, yo. <clears throat> But now I can't wait for the sisterhood that is going to come through these pages because for those who missed the beginning, um, I read the, the blurb at the back of the book. Oh, Makanaka says it's hard to listen to. Yeah. Uh, Kumbu says, imagine seeing your doomed future at 15. Yo. These African practices um, are very strange. Yes, Jane. Jane says some strange African practices, like a person passing away and then somebody else who is way younger now has to take over. Like there are so many things that I have a problem with about African tradition that I used to like question. Even when um, when I when before I got married. My own novella was just like I, I I was reading, I was actually reading Misbehave, uh, back in twenty what I don't know twenty fourteen when, <laughs> and I was like, you know, yeah. So I also had like some issues. Um, Jane says uh, Charlotte is also trying to get herself the book. Um, Blackbird Books is here. What's up, Makanaka? You're sending tears, but you wrote it. I mean, she's like crying, but she's the one, you know. She, you're the one who's gonna make us cry here and be all sad at the beginning, even. Um, so yes, uh, you can get the book online. Um, Blackbird Books is online. Um, they are in the comments as well. Yes, you can get a copy at at Blackbird at Blackbird Books Africa. Uh, so www.blackbirdbooks.africa Blackbird Books is now independent and we're trying to like get reprints lots of reprints guys so get your book um, I know some of the the local booksellers are also they do have it but um, you can if you are into online you can get it on blackbirdbooks.africa uh, Jane says I've heard of these practices but among adults yeah yeah, but imagine she's 15 and she has to go and now pay for her late aunt. Like, her late aunt is gone. Why can't he just be without one wife? I mean, he already has four wives. Why take a 15-year-old? Like, she's a minor. Um, and I like how Makanaka is showing how poverty can, can get a f family into, like, this... Yo, it changes everything. Um, it is very emotional. Um, Blackbird Book says, uh, I understand why Makanaka is emotional because these practices are a reality in some communities. They still are, even in 2020. Um, Ms. Wina says, I love how the prologue is structured. A very unique style using different years to intrigue the readers. Right? Um, yeah, because I'm reading and I'm seeing that like, the numbers and I'm like, hmm, okay, okay, you know, like, so now we are sold and we are going to be buying the book, right, guys? Um, I'm glad I actually read this today because I've been eyeing it since I got it last week from at reading dates. Uh, please follow at reading dates underscore is it underscore? Um, Nikki, let me see. Uh, hi, Samu, how are you? Hi, Pumi. Pumi is from the uh, Joburg uh, book. Wait, is it Joburg book club? Or the other way? Yeah, Bo Joburg book club. Hi, Pumi. What up? Um, I'm trying to get. Uh, so I got this from my friend Nikki. Um, but you must get your copy, guys. It's too. Yeah, I know it's something. I don't want to go onto the website now, but yes. Um, at reading dates underscore mwah, mwah. yes thank you guys for joining us what oh it's 1737 okay we are done for the day I'm glad I've, I read this I love all all these covers 
that Blackbird Books is is giving us. Boo babes, bama covers, guys. Boo babes, bama covers. Babes, bama covers. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I'm telling you. Um, so get yourself some Blackbird Book Love. Uh, let underscore spaces absolutely have to get this book currently in my loot car. <laughs> oh, you've got a, you also have a loot card. Hey, la la la. My wish list is like this long, this long. <laughs> uh, Ms. Wana says, I'm glad you read it because I'm definitely going to read my copy now that the prologue captured me. Yes. And yes, Blackbird Books is explaining that, um, the covers were done by Cindy Sokumalo. I love what you guys are doing with these covers. They are amazing. I love them. Um, Lit, Lit X Space says it. Yes, Miss Wina, absolutely agree with you. Yes. Oh, babes are my covers, guys. I love these covers. Um, so that was today's reading of Makanaka Mavengere Munsaka's Perfect Imperfections. I love the, the, the title as well, by the way. Um, and I know um, during a discussion with uh, the Chicken Eaters, um, Makanaka said um, she, she actually was intentional with the, with, the, with the title, Perfect Imperfections, because our lives as, um, I mean, uh, because uh, Maxine is, is now working with these, working for these women, um, the, their lives seem perfect, but they're actually not, you know, like, so I'm looking forward to all of this and making sense of all the chats that I've been going into, um, with her as, um, Blackbird Book says, we love you, Makanaka. Yes, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We're proud of this. Uh, Simula says, I bought my copy last year at the Women in Literature event. I got home and read it immediately. Oh, wow. Yes, that Women in Literature. Was it Black Girls in Literature? Yes, it was Black Girls in Literature. Um, Nikki says, oh, I have to go because my phone is telling me that my battery or something. I think my memory is full. I have to go before it cuts me off and doesn't save this live. Mwah, mwah, mwah. See you guys tomorrow at five. Okay. Happy Thursday. Happy Pooza Thursday. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you guys for tuning in. And this will be saved on the IGTV. And I will upload it onto YouTube, onto the YouTube channel, which is Bukamusa Book Club. Please go subscribe. Bye, Kumbu. Bye, everybody. Um, Lit X underscore spaces. That's such a powerful title. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Can't wait to read the book. Yes. Can't wait. Um, it's going to be nice. I think we'll read it for August. Women's Month, you know. Yes. Bye.